put this FIE revolver back together now. I've re-blued the barrel, pretty much all the black steel parts. Uh, re-blued them, uh, done a KFOS treatment, and then frog lubed. Uh, recolored the safety. Um, pretty much everything has had has been blasted, has been reblued, has been kfost, uh, frog lubed. It's all treated, and we're ready to go back together now. Um, you can tell a drastic difference in the coloration of the aluminum parts. And on these, it's a good idea to go ahead, especially if you have blasted or anything. Go ahead and test fit your threads. If you get any resistance, just work it back and forth. Just a little bit as you get a little resistance. Clean everything out, make sure that there's nothing in there. And the way this is set up, you want to go ahead and make sure that you can get your sight straight. That is, we're in good shape there. So now, I'm actually going to put a little Loctite on this one. Uh, it was already had a little slack in it and so I'm going to lock tight it to ensure that we have a good lock up and everything's good and solid um, if you don't have any way to really grab a hold of this barrel solidly you might want to think before using red Loctite on it. Maybe look into the blue. I'm going to put a dab in the pinhole there. Just eyeball it. Now you've got your two pins here. You're going to have a long and a short pin. The long pin is the one for your barrel. This one's been notched a little bit, so I'm going to. Try and make sure to not put the notch back in the same place. Notice I've got a brass hammer here. Take a screwdriver to prop it up there. Check our pin, make sure that we're about even on both sides. I'm trying not to tap it too far. I think that got it. Yeah, one more tap. There we go. Now our barrel is installed.
Now, we'll go ahead and do our firing pin assembly. We have a spring, our firing pin, firing pin retainer cap, and it's got a notch, and that's where the pin will go through. And your firing pin, again, this all just reverse of the install. The pin goes right in through there. You'll be able to see it right back there. Spring goes right down over the firing pin. And then this cup here will go with that notch up towards the top. And now as you drive this lateral pin in to that, it'll for the most part be self-aligning because it will make that line up. Do a little tap here with a brass punch. And we're in. Now I've got another pin here. little resistance to begin with. Whenever you get some resistance like that, it's a good idea to go ahead. Something may not be just right. And when I look in there, our cup is just a little bit crooked. And so, I'm going to take punches and just by hand work it through there and that will actually twist that little cup in there and align it. That's much better. knocking stuff off over there. Alright, we've still got a little resistance. So rather than bulldoze through it, I'll back it off and we'll find out what's causing the problem. It appears that everything's in good shape.
I'm going to pause the camera here. I'm going to take this over to my vise where I have a more solid bench to hit on. I think the only issue is my table's giving a little bit too much. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. As soon as I took it over on a solid countertop that didn't have flex in it, it went right in. No problem. Go ahead and put the lid back on my Loctite. So now we've got our firing pin and you want to go ahead and right here make sure that you have a spring in it that it, it that it does in fact work and the uh, detent ball that I lost earlier on I did find it uh, I didn't even look for it I just <laughs> happened to see it because a few days have passed since I did that earlier part of this video so that's just it's funny how stuff like that works. I found that it seems like whenever I really, really, really look, and I look and I look, I never find it. But if I just don't worry about it and just kind of relax, things tend to usually show up. Probably a lesson to be learned there. We'll go ahead and do this part here since I got it stripped and it may be a little easier. And for this, I am going to put on some safety glasses because I don't really want to lose an eyeball working on this gun this evening. And I'll, I'll show you real quick a very good way to figure out what spring does what on this gun. You can't always rely on this. On this one, you can just, if you don't know what spring goes where, just hold the springs up and see. Oh, that spring fits in there. That must be it. Got all the other springs accounted for. So that must be the one. So now this little detent ball will ride right on there. Now what I've done is I've set the spring in there and the detent ball. And now I'm going to take my plate here. And what I did last time was I let that detent ball go right through the screw hole there. And I'm not going to do that this time. And the idea here, what will really help you is being as square as you possibly can. If you let that ball, if you let that plate angle at all, it'll send that ball somewhere it doesn't belong. And then you just slide it up. You'll feel it go through the detents. Slide it right into place. Just like that. And then get your screw. I believe that it is this one right here. Yep. Again, you want to make sure you're using good gunsmith screwdrivers. And on all this hardware, all these screws and everything, where people had used the wrong screwdrivers in the past, and sometimes even using good gunsmith screwdrivers, you'll mar up a head or the edges of it. Well, I took a little file, diamond file, and... Uh, removed all the burrs, blasted it, and then re-blued them. So, the screws don't look all marred up anymore. But once you've done that, that means that you got to be that much more careful. I can always go back in and retouch up 
the bluing. But touch ups suck. They're a hassle to have to do. And they never turn out as good as the original. Job. Snug that up. Make sure that all works. Everything's there. All right. <clears throat> Our safety is in. Now, we'll go ahead. Let's see. Our hand. And our hammer. Attached together. Like so. And that hand's going to slide into that slot right there. Hand coming up through there. Have our hammer. And line it up. Get the proper bolt, screw, threaded device, whatever it may be that you want to run through there. Whenever you get, especially on these flatheads, whenever you get right down there near the end, you've got to watch that, that the edge of that flathead is not going to gouge up whatever you're screwing the screw into if it's off center. And that's true of taking it apart and installing. Check and make sure that everything's moving. Got a, I'm noticing a little bit of binding in there, but I'm not going to worry about it yet. I'm going to see if uh, once I get the rest of the parts and the hammer or the hammer spring and everything, mainspring, see if it will unload itself some. If not, I'll know right where to look for the binding. But I don't remember how that piece behaved on its own. So I'm pretty sure it's installed in there properly, so I'll just leave it alone for now. We have our detent and our spring. It's going to go into that hole there. And what we're going to need to do Let's have this in there first, in place first. Get it in there, put a little pressure on the spring, make sure that it's got it held in place. Actually, you know what? I am gonna, I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna remove that because I don't wanna lose that stuff if I end up 
knocking something off, putting the rest of the trigger and everything in. So. Your spring. this all fits in is going to be like this right here it actually goes right down in here whenever you got the gun upside down it's actually going to go over here it'll stick up through that hole there whenever it is actuated so it needs to be on the side of the hole well. now our trigger and it goes in just beside it Just reach up there and make sure that trigger's pointed up. Actually, it is ends up being down, but it just slides down past the catches in the hammer. And reach down in here, get everything lined up. Hopefully you guys can see. It's hard for me to see if you're seeing this. But that will just go through both of those. I'm not loctiting any of this stuff. I don't really like to lock tight stuff into aluminum unless I just have to. Uh, gentleman that owns this gun, uh, I see him enough that if we start to see anything loosening up, I'll address it on a case-by-case -case basis. All right. We'll take our trigger spring and it's just going to sit on top of there and it's going to take this little flathead alright anyways uh, my memory card ran out so we were about to thread this flathead in right here I'm going to grab the proper screwdriver for it. Or maybe I had it. Maybe that's why I was using that small one. Some of these screwdrivers are pretty thick, the blades on them. And so sometimes you have to go with one that's not quite the right width. But as long as it's the right thickness, that's part of what makes it the right thing or the wrong thing. And remember you're threading this into aluminum so you want to be careful. And again whenever it does, if it doesn't want to start remember what I said uh, about spinning the screw the opposite direction. Uh, loosen it uh, and it will help you catch the beginning of the threads. You loosen it a little bit and then try and tighten it. Loosen it, spin it a few times backwards and 
you'll feel it whenever it notches into the beginning of the thread. And you probably saw that trigger pull forward as I tighten this spring down. It's putting pressure on it and tensioning it. There we go. Sorry about bumping the camera. So far that seems to be doing good. I'm still not 100% sold on whether or not we're going to get full articulation with the hammer. We'll find out here in a few. If not, I'll address the problem off camera and then I'll walk you guys back through it. Now if I remember correctly on getting the main spring in What I did was start the main spring up there, thread it in, and get it ready here. And if I remember correctly, I took a punch. Ooh, about sent some parts flying. A bigger punch than that. Punch up the right size there. And I had something wedged in here to pull back in tension on the spring. And what I'm doing here is I'm pushing opposite of each other. about to go now that I got them right there I'm holding with one hand and I'm going to bring my hammer in brass hammer and we'll give it a little tap down Now there may be 10 other ways of doing that better, but that's worked for me every single time. If you'll notice a little offline there, that's the case. Go in here. Until you get it good and even. Make sure your spring is where it needs to be up there. And you've got a main spring into your handle. Voila. All right. We'll go ahead and proceed with our ejector. This is going to slide right into there just like so so take spring your ejector rod and that's just gonna slide right in there Run your spring down over the shaft. And it's all going to fit right down into there. Best I can tell, there is no forward or aft on the spring.
Now I know which one of the screws this is based off of the size of the screw. Let's see if I can get my hands up here and get to focus. But also because the threads are in bad shape on this one. I'm actually going to use a good bit of Loctite because I don't want to bother with trying to re-tap this or re-thread this right now. Red Loctite will hold this. This is not a very highly stressed part. Red Loctite will hold this, hold it properly, and keep me from having to get into cutting a lot of metal on this or possible helicoils and whatever else. Trying to track down a different screw, oversized screw. If the red Loctite does hold with no problems, it'll be a much better solution and outcome than going through all that hassle. And I don't necessarily mean a hassle for me. I mean just a hassle for the owner. It can really... That can get into some cost and a little bit extra time. So if we can do this, it's kind of a happy medium. Red Loctite. Right down there, kind of finger, finger tight. Finger tight. You see me working this back and forth here. Now that did not want to catch very well. I'm not happy with that. After Even after running it in with Loctite, what I'm going to do is back it back out. I'm going to wipe the Loctite off of it. And I'm going to take a punch and I'm going to score up, mushroom out the threads on this a little bit. Wipe it off. Now down here where it's stripped out, I'm going to mushroom up the threads a little bit there. Just mar them up a little bit to make them cut. Do this over here real quick. You can hear I'm not hitting too hard. All right. And one last thing, this is gonna be a very tricky operation. You may witness me scratch the bluing on this barrel, but what I'm going to do is take this automatic punch here and try and mushroom 
this in just a hair. Yep, scratch the barrel a little bit. I can touch that up. Well, that did not work. All I ended up doing was scratching the barrel. That'll be fine. Here's what we'll do. Give it just a tap there. This is where the uh, Formula 44, the instant blue, comes in real, real handy. Because I can go in here, right here on the bottom, where the scratch is, with a Q-tip. Rub that in, and it will be just fine. Now things might be a little different if the gun was 100% pristine. We'll wipe that off in a second. Maybe even give her another coat. Since I have just blued that, I'm going to take a little frog lube, put on it there to keep it from wanting to corrode, because if you ever mess with bluing anything, it will corrode badly. We're going to double down on our Loctite. And we're going to put this sucker together. And if it doesn't end up holding in the long run, so be it. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. The gentleman that owns this firearm will be informed to watch out for it. And we'll go from there. A little bit of a little bit of a grab there. Help out some. Alright. Now We will put our loading gate in there. Just like we talked about before. Detent. Now my preference on this is to do the bottom screws first. Again, Sorry, trigger is just going to go straight through your hole there. Fit right over there. Make sure that your spring is underneath there. Look 
looking everything over. We got good tension going in. What I'm doing is I'm pressing down here to make sure that when I tension it, it's the spring is seating into everything properly, and it is. And so we'll go ahead and get our screws ready. And now these are Phillips screws. Which makes them just a little bit different. And my Phillips screwdriver. What I found is it's a little easier to go ahead and get those in there. And if you happen to have two that the heads are better than the other ones, put your two best Phillips screws here because they're going to be the ones that you've got to get that initial bite on and they're going to be responsible for having to do the initial first holding so you want them to be the best screws that you've got going to be cantankerous, isn't it? Get my screws. Trigger through the slot. Run it straight down. There we go. Now, what you don't want to do is tighten one of these and not tighten the other one. Because if you get one side started and you don't at least get the other side as far along, you can get the whole thing cocked sideways, break a screw off, break the aluminum, something, because you're under pressure. If you get those two screws started, they are loaded and they are under pressure and you need to finish getting them tight and they need to be even. And by the way, the uh, presidential election or the presidential debate, the first one was tonight dates this uh, video here and I, I must say I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that Romney waxed the floor with Obama you know I'm not a huge Romney fan per se in all honesty I liked Herman Cain but in the world of lesser of two or multiple evils, <laughs> I will take Romney any day. And with Paul Ryan as his VP, it's a pretty good ticket. Pretty good combination. Now I get back to the gun at hand here. What I've done is, before I got these completely tight, I went ahead and started this third one. And I'm going to run these down until they're pretty much snug and they have soaked up all of our seam here and then I'll put the other two in but I'm not tightening these yet they're just snug now you want to go ahead and make sure that your holes are coming close to lining up here they may not be perfect just keep in mind, you don't want to force anything. Now on these, really, you can run one pretty much all the way down, and then the other one without putting a lot of tight, and don't tighten it yet, just snug it down. Because it's not going to be loaded, because you've already got the bottom ones on. 
Now I have actually scuffed up this just a little bit. I did exactly what I told you guys not to do. And there we go. All right. We've got a cylinder here. And the table. Let's see here. Have to open up our gate. Woo! What a catch. Trying to show you guys this. This is going to go right down through there, and it is going to fit down through your cylinder. And if I remember correctly, let's see here. You guys that just watched the video are probably thinking, what are you doing? It doesn't go that way. Because it's fresh on your minds. You just saw it happen. All right, now, what I did was the spring and the short end, the nut, are on the left-hand side, and the long goes in the right-hand side. And what I'm having to do is put this screwdriver just on half of this, and again, being very careful to not scuff up the aluminum with it as it comes around. That's all you're looking for is just to snug it. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah. All right. Now we're a little, yep, yeah, we're bound up there. We are bound up, so I will take that back. The hand is bound up down in there. What I'll do is I will I'll fix the problem, and then once I have fixed it, I will show you guys exactly what, what I found, where it bound, and what the problem was, and uh, make sure that you guys have that on the video, have something to watch for. Um, I thought that there was maybe going to be an issue with that, but I went ahead and put it together anyways because this is a real good opportunity to show and to teach. Uh, and uh, we'll fix it, and I'll show you what to do. And this will be this will be the end of this section of the video. Um, the rest of it will probably follow right behind it. Um, but I'm going to hit the sack. It's late. Take it easy. Well, I lied. I, I, I'm still here. Didn't go to bed. Um, 
what I found the problem was was where we had right off the bat initially the safety here and I'm using some of this new hardware this screw here threaded in all the way was right in the way let's see how well you guys can see here but it actually came straight into that channel where the hand comes up it protruded into there and I backed it out and everything works just fine now now I am going to lube this and I actually threw the gate on the ground um, I left the gate off of there just like I said, I just wanted to double check and make sure that I had, in fact, solved the problem. Um, but I'll go ahead and pull this back off tomorrow, put the gate in, lube everything a little bit uh, with some frog lube. It's already been lubed, but I'm going to hit it again just a little bit, um, put it all back together, and we'll be done with it. All right. It's back together, uh, lubed everything up, like I said. The issue was this screw right here for the safety selector. It was getting into the hand. And so now, I'll put the rear sight back on. There was no reason to remove the rear sight other than just for cleaning purposes. But I did it anyways, just to show you guys. And now it has a set screw and we're going to rely on it for the adjustment and to hold it. I'm not going to lock tight it or anything like that. We'll make sure that it shoots straight. grub screw. Hope you guys can see here. Yeah. Now this screw ideally will be right down the center, but you've also got the edges you can use for alignment. bit of the bluing that I had left over and dab on there. Now we have our grips. This is not the original hardware for this, but I'm going to go back with it. I re -blued it, cleaned it up. It'll work for now. Maybe the original bolt, but it's not the original nut. Pretty certain of that. Now, when you're doing dealing with polymer and stuff, you've got to be careful not to over tighten your, especially the older stuff like this. You can definitely crack it. And that is the FIE E15, or the model E15, 22 long rifle revolver. That's a full disassembly, 
full reassembly and for all practical purposes it's finished up I'll end up testing this we'll do some test firing make sure that everything on it works perfectly and uh, get it back to the gentleman I really 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 appreciate you guys watching and uh, for any of you guys that have found this and you know are watching and haven't subscribed uh, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel um, I constantly try and upload new content um, if you're new to YouTube and you don't realize what subscribing is or you've never even thought about it it was brought to my attention that some people might mistake subscribing for thinking that it cost money it does not cost money um, if you have a gmail account already you have what you need you can sign into youtube using that gmail information and uh... you just click subscribe subscribe and what that'll do is uh... anytime that anyone that you subscribe to their channel if they upload a new video uh... you will get a notification in that particular email that gmail account letting you know there's a new email or a new video uploaded it helps us out uh... the ones that do youtube and, and do the videos and everything and uh... It, it lets us see what people like what they don't like uh... drop me some comments uh... if you like the video click thumbs up uh... the feedback helps lets me know what you like and what you want appreciate you